Hey guys, uh, did you know that when I bought my Ender 3 V3 SE, I told myself, hey, stock would be fine. I, mean, I won't be doing any upgrades. And I didn't know how wrong I was at that time. Anyways, uh, on this video, I'm going to show you my upgrades on my Ender 3 V3 SE. Mostly my upgrades are just aesthetics, functionality, and uh, performance. And I'm going to show you what would be the difference between the uh, stock and the upgraded one. So for starters, I've moved the spool holder at the top of my desk. And it's not going to be directly on the uh, printer itself. Next would be a Bowden tube that goes directly to the extruder. A benchy that supports the Bowden tube going through the extruder. A USB holder. A tool holder so you won't be losing any of, any of your tools. Uh, storage pins. I usually put the uh, calibrated prints on there so I would have some reference. A motor cap that doesn't really do anything. It's there for aesthetics. The lighter holder and my spatula holder. The cable organizer for style and protection. So as you can see, I didn't put it on top because whenever I print too high, it hits the top surface. As you can see. A PEI bed on the front and on the back as you can see it is PEO good design next would be the polycarbonate steel the stock that comes with the printer itself I usually use this for other materials next would be another PEI just a regular PEI next would be a smooth PEI as you can see the plate A the other one would be a B. Next is gonna be a PEI and the other side would be PEY. I'm not sure, but it has a carbon fiber pattern. Next would be the PEI with the honeycomb pattern. And it's back to back either way if we're gonna use it the front or back. Uh, it's gonna be cool. And lastly, a Bowden that would be connected to the extruder plus the uh, indicator. And the most exciting part, the extruder. I'm going to try to disassemble the extruder and reassemble it. I'm going to try to explain to you what would be the parts for. And uh, yeah, let's just try to do it. So I'm going to start on this side right here. Then on the other side and on the front so you could see the whole extruder. I'm going to try to remove the whole assembly. So you're not going to have any troubles on putting it back as it's because it's labeled. As you can see, EM for electric motor, CR touch for the CR touch, heat, uh, that would be for the heating element. Uh, this doesn't have any, but it's for the sensor. And the other two for fan two, fan one. Uh, so the other one would be part cooling fan and the other fan. So for starters, this would be the 5015 mount fan. Uh, it greatly increases the performance and helps with the noise reduction and reduces stringing due to the uh, dual-sided blowing docks. Next would be the 5015 fan itself. 
As you can see, it's 24 volt. It has a cover for aesthetics. As you can see, it just mounted right here. Next would be the 4020 fan. As you can see, it's bigger than the other one. I'm going to show you a comparison for that. And uh, I don't really like how I printed it, but it functions very well. So I don't really have anything to say with that. This is the CR Touch. And this is the extruder. Let's get back to that in a little bit. Uh, the gear indicator. And lastly, the major upgrade that I made on the printer itself, which is the ceramic block kit. And yeah, so far, this is one of the uh, best upgrades that I made. Uh, it's kind of dirty because it's just been used. Uh, but some people actually had some issues on this being removed. Uh, but as of the moment, I don't really have any is uh, issues with that up until now, like this moment right there. I didn't know that this part is actually loose as you can see uh it doesn't really uh tighten very much so uh on this point i actually made uh, uh a repair for that and uh, i'm gonna show you that in a little bit okay so the main issue that you actually have right here is the uh screw is not biting on the thread itself so if you take a look at the screw, it's just biting at the very end. What I did, I got the old hot end. As you can see, if you remove it, it actually has two screws as well, which is the same on the ceramic block. It's just longer. Uh, what I did, I just replaced it with the other screw. And uh, hopefully it actually solves the, solves the issue. Okay, as you can see, I can actually feel that it is biting now on the thread itself. As you can see, it just hits the other heat sink there, but it doesn't. I think it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and assemble it already. Okay, as you can see, it is actually sturdy. Luckily, I still have the old hot end for the extra screw, and yeah, you can see, pretty sturdy. Okay, now I'm going to show you the old hot end that I have and the new one, as you can see, size comparison. Other one's quite small, but it's really powerful, great performance. This is the old fan that would be connected to the hot end. And this is the 4020 fan that would be the replacement for that. As you can see, very powerful, nice performance. And this is the uh, cooling fan for the nozzle itself, as you can see. And this is the replacement 5015 one. And as you can see, the other one just has one, the other has two. And the extruder. It doesn't really have any upgrades, but I just want to show you how I disassemble it or how it actually functions. So at least you would have a better understanding on how the uh, you know extruder works. So for starters, let's just remove the two screws from there or loosen the uh, tighten bolt right here. Okay, as you can see, this is how the inside of an extruder or the sprite extruder looks like. As you can see, this is the gear that connects to the motor. This is the tensioning bar, so you could put on the filament. As you can see, there. It's going to be stuck right there. There you go. And the other one is the tensioning spring. As you can see, it's going to remove it. I'm going to show you what is looks like, see? Okay, let's put it back uh, just put on the gear right here the lever bar right here and the spring and screw as you could see this part screw here so you can take a look uh, this screw right here specifically uh, turns the other way so if you turn it right it loosens turn it left it tightens it's uh, uh, on a different uh, level so anyways uh, let's just put in back the uh, spring right there Put it on the lever, 
There you go. Make sure it is loosened before you put in the cap. Okay, and before you put it back in, make sure that the lever is actually tightened enough so the filament won't really get loose right there. Okay, I think this is going to suffice. Let's put it back on the uh, tool head itself on the printer. Okay, the first thing that you want to put right there is the hot end itself and make sure this notch right here faces that way. Okay, and make sure you read the labels before putting it in on the connection so you won't have any troubles. Okay, so before tightening the screws, make sure that the uh, ducts don't, don't really hit the nozzle or the bed itself. Uh, what I usually do, I just drag the whole tool head down and uh, make sure it doesn't really hit the bed itself. Okay, that should actually be it. Uh, make sure to level the bed properly before printing anything else. And other than that, that you should be good to go. And as you could see here, this is one of my first prints without the upgrades. I just accidentally put the seam at the left side, but take a look at the hull. It's actually rough. The overhangs on the holes right there, it's not that good. I mean, it's, it's nice for the stock model, but you know, uh, I mean, I mean, it, it can do better. And this is the upgraded one. As you can see, the hull is quite smooth. The overhangs are not that uh, protruding. Uh, I really like how it actually went out. I mean, it it, it actually did a lot better than the uh, stock one. Uh, but you know, on the normal eye, I actually ask my wife what's the difference between the two. She can't really actually point out the difference, uh, as you could see. But uh, you know, I really see it. I'm not really sure why the other one is actually vibrant than the other one. Uh, maybe because of the moisture. I'm not really quite sure. But if you take a look. Uh, the upgraded one or the on the left side it is actually better than the uh right side 
See, it's kind of rough. The other one's kind of smooth. And these are the collections of my Benchies. I usually use them as swatches. Uh, anyways. Uh, but yeah, that would actually conclude the video on my upgrade on my Ender 3 V3 SE. I will be posting uh, my future upgrades in the near future. Uh, I, I can make it a tutorial if you want or a first-hand experience if ever I'm going to have one. But most likely, the other upgrade I'm going to use is the uh, rail for the X-axis. I'm not sure if I'm, uh, I'm going to do it on the Y-axis, depending on the uh, uh, mood and budget and, you know... Anyways, uh, I hope you liked the video. Please like, share, or subscribe. Uh, do comment what you want me to print, want me to do on an upgrade, or you just have any questions on the printer itself. I'll be more than happy to uh, help you with that. Again, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.